Hey, Charlize. Nice to see you again. Hi, nice to see you. How are you? I'm well. Obviously, I would prefer to be seeing you in person. I do appreciate you making the time. Are you having an enjoyable summer? Yes, I am. Listen, I mean, not without mentioning everything that we've been going through. I will say it's been really, really nice to spend time with my kids and to just be home. I'm always craving more of that, so I've taken full advantage of that. And I should be noted that when you have a big movie like this, someone like you, who's the star of it, would have to be doing so much press on the road. It must be kind of nice to just be able to do it for home. Yeah, I don't think we're going to go back to the other. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it makes sense to have to leave home for six months to make a movie, but it always seems like such a bummer to have to then leave home for another two months to talk about it. I, mean, I don't know. I might disagree with you. I'm trying to figure out how I can just do everything from here. <laughs> Even the movie? Well, I should, I should stress that I feel like um, I really enjoyed this movie. I love the comic it was based on. I feel like The Old Guard, uh, if you shot it at home, would be considerably worse. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's a good friend. You just gave me the honest God truth, so I'll take that. Thank you <laughs> you uh, play one of a, a group of immortal soldiers. Yeah. Your character may be um, 6,000 plus years old. You look great. I don't know what the secret is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you ever, like playing a character like this, did you think about what it would actually be like? Would you be one, somebody who would be in for another, uh, another 6,000 years of, of living? Mm, I don't know about that. I think, I think, you know, when you just think about it, uh, my rea reaction would be, oh my gosh, more time with people that I love. Like, of course, that sounds really nice. But, but ultimately, I think, I think having to live for a very long time must feel incredibly lonely. And I think the idea of losing people that you love over and over and over again, I would have a really hard time with that. Yeah, in the movie, it should be noted, this is a super fun action movie, uh, but it's also really sad at times, and I think it does a nice job of looking at that as well. I also want to give you a shout out for this, um, as an action movie star, which let's be honest, you fully are now. <laughs> I feel like you are at the forefront of fight scenes that take place in enclosed places. I feel like I've, you've had some really good stairway uh, fights in some, in some films. Uh, this has an airplane fight, a, a hallway fight. You're getting very good at close fighting. Wow, thank you. You're just with so many com coming with so many compliments. <laughs> you just FaceTime every morning. Can I start my day? Yeah, I, I would super be down for it, yeah. <laughs> it is fun. It is actually the challenge when you have a, a set piece kind of dictate the space that you're going to be able to utilize. It's really fun to have, to have that. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I'm inspired by fights. Like, you know, you know the bathroom fight in Mission? Where yeah. The, yeah, I mean, I love, I love fights like that. So um, I think it, it's always the set piece plays a huge part in it. And when you have a lot, of, a lot of space, I think you lose some of that intensity of like people being right on top, top of each other in the hand-to-hand -hand combat style. So where else can we have a fight scene? Hmm. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I feel like... I mean, you guys, because I feel like there's obviously the bathroom uh, fight scene uh, in Michigan, and then this has an airplane fight scene, but have we seen a really good airplane bathroom fight scene? Oh. Now we're really, now we're making it a small. Now part. we are literally just in body to body contact. That's yeah, exactly. Amazing, though. No one, uh, no one wins in an airplane bathroom fight. That is no, one of the adages. Yeah, no, everyone's a loser in that for sure. You have an axe in this film, and uh, you seem very comfortable with the axe. Is does something does um does work go into looking like you know what you're doing with an axe? <laughs> it's a mixture of work, and then also, I was advised uh, by my incredible fight coordinator, Danny Hernandez, to just walk around with the axe at all times. So he gave me an axe. It was rubber, but it still looked very, very real. And he just said, listen, just keep it with you at all times. Like, like he's like, even if you go for a drive, like if you go to a restaurant, this was back before lockdown. Like if you go, just have it in the car, even if you just hold it, or if you're in the kitchen cooking, like just twirl it a little bit. So, you know, I take direction very seriously. 
so I did that. And it, I remember one night I went out to dinner and the valet pulled my car around and he just got out of the car and he just did his face just, he, he didn't <laughs> anything and I couldn't quite understand it. I was like, did I tip him? Is it because I, did I not tip enough? And then I got in the car and the big ax was just lying there and I was like, oh. Yeah. And it should be noted. It's not, it's not the kind of acts where somebody might have thought you were doing some woodworking. It's definitely like, <laughs> it's definitely a menace axe. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a prehistoric, like, <laughs> yeah. double-faced axe that just looks like it is going to hurt you by looking at it.